Hey there, welcome to episode four of uh, the Monroe Model F calculator. So we're going to get into modeling a gear in SolidWorks. Um, so to model a gear, you have to measure it first. So uh, there are several uh, fundamental measurements of gears that you have to know about. Um, so here I've drawn uh, badly um, a kind of a, um, a drawing of a gear and I've drawn several sort of circles around it and I've drawn the teeth very badly um, but it'll it'll serve for our purposes so the circle that I want to point out first of all is this center one and it's called the pitch circle and the pitch circle is actually an abstract circle um, you can't actually directly measure it on a gear um, you have to sneak up on it so um, the all the measurements of a gear are related to the pitch circle um, if I draw let's see Okay, so we've got also um, an outside circle, outside circle, and you can see that that's where the teeth end. And then we've got a root circle, and you can see that's where the teeth begin, or where they're rooted, okay? So um, it's pretty easy, well, um, if you have a gear that has an even number of teeth, it's really easy to measure the outside and the root diameters. You simply take your calipers and you just, you know, slap it right across the teeth and there's your outside. And then you go into the gap between the teeth and there's your root. Um, it's obviously a little harder if you have an odd number of teeth because then you can't um, easily go across the teeth, but that's for a later um, for a later video maybe if we happen to have um, a odd number of teeth in a gear. Anyway, this one has 18 teeth, so it's even. Uh, all right, so we know that the number of teeth on this is 18. What we don't know is anything else about the gear, uh, especially not the pitch circle. Now, why is the pitch circle so important? Well, first of all, um, if we take the face of one of these teeth and look at the angle that it forms with the pitch circle at that point, that's called the pressure angle, and it's basically the angle at which two teeth um, from two gears uh, mesh with each other. That's called phi, that's the pressure angle. And again, we can't easily uh, directly measure it. Uh, however, the nice thing is that um, just like n is always an integer, phi is always one of several numbers. Um, and this is just because manufacturing gears with standard numbers is easy. Um, so this can be 14.5 degrees, or it can be 20 degrees. Um, there may be some other um, degrees, but these are the most common ones. So that's the pressure angle. Pressure angle. Okay, this is the number of teeth. Okay, and then there's one other fundamental measurement for a gear, and it is called the diametral pitch or P. The diametral pitch is defined as the number of teeth um, per unit diameter, I think, along the pitch circle. So um, let's see how I can illustrate this. Um, yeah, okay, so this is easy. So if, if we have a pitch circle whose diameter is one inch exactly, well, we know that the circumference of a circle, the circumference of a circle is simply pi times its diameter. 
And if we have a certain number of teeth along the entire circumference of the circle, n, right? So the number of teeth, um, let's see, yeah, so it's the number of teeth divided by the diameter is equal to the diametral pitch. And pitch simply means the number of things per unit measurement. Um, so since, since d is equal to um, c divided by pi, this is just pi over n divided by c, that doesn't really matter. The point is that p is also a standard manufacturing measurement. And two gears of different numbers of teeth will mesh properly if they have the same pressure angle and the same pitch. So you have sets of gears with the same pitch. Um, pitches are integral, um, at least in the imperial system. Um, in the metric system, you have a slightly different way of measuring pitch. It's called module. Um, um, but we're dealing with um, a gear that was made in the United States, so this is an imperial measurement, which means that it has a pitch, um, a diametral pitch. Um, so the diametral pitch can be, you know, something like 2, 4, I guess 5, 6, 7, and so on. Um, I know that some other standard pitches are 16. There's another standard pitch that's 20. I think there's a 24, a 30, a 36, and so on. Um, the point being that whenever you have two gears that, met, that mesh, they have to have the same diametral pitch. Um, so these are the fundamental measurements of a gear. Um, it's pretty easy to measure N. Uh, to measure the pressure angle, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. And from that measurement, you can actually get the pitch, uh, the diametral pitch. So there are a couple of other uh, things on a gear that are important to know. So um, yeah, you can measure the outside and the root circle, but um, these have special names. So if you say, if you measure the distance between the outside diameter and the pitch circle diameter, that's called the addendum. And addendum addendum is actually Latin for that which is to be added. Um, and basically, it's just the amount to be added to the diameter of the pitch circle to get the outside. So that's the addendum. Um, and again, in manufacturing, there is a standard addendum. A equals 1 divided by P, the diametral pitch. So if you have a pitch of 2, which means 2 teeth per pitch diameter, then the addendum would be half an inch. Uh, there's also, from the pitch circle down to the root circle, is the dedendum, dedendum, which is Latin for that which is to be subtracted or that which is to be removed. And it's simply um, the, the amount to remove from the diameter of the pitch circle to get to the root circle. So that's addendum and dedendum. And again, in manufacturing, we have a standard dedendum. It's simply one and a quarter divided by P. So basically it's a quarter, it's 25% more than the addendum. Um, okay, so let's talk about how you measure the pressure angle. And the way of measuring the pressure angle, there's this sort of uh, standard uh, rule of thumb. And what you do is you can take your calipers and your gear, and you go across, say, three teeth. Doesn't quite matter, I don't think, how many teeth you go across as long as it's not, you know, so many that you're actually not on the face of the tooth anymore. Um, you know, in, in this particular case, um, my calipers are probably on the corner, like right over here. So they're not actually measuring along the face. 
So, you know, three teeth is good. I guess two teeth is okay. Four teeth is fine. So I'm going to measure that. And what do I get? I get 0.594. So that's 0 0.594 across however many teeth that is. Now, I do the same measurement across one less tooth. And I get... 0.428, say, 0.429. And then I subtract the one from the other. And what that does is the first measurement was from the outer tooth here to the outer edge of the tooth here. And the second measurement for it was from the outer edge of the same tooth to the outer edge of the um, tooth before this one. And when you subtract, you should get approximately the distance between teeth. So if I subtract that, I get, um, I think it's, uh, it looks like 0.165 inches. So the way you get the pitch is you guess at the pressure angle and then you compute pi times cosine of the pressure angle. And let's just call this, I don't know, little d. And then you divide by little d. And you look at the answer. And that is actually defined as the pitch. So if I take pi times cosine 14.5 and I divide by d, I get an answer that's something like um, so if phi is 14.5 degrees, then I get a pitch of 18.546, which is clearly not a standard um, integral number. If I take pi equals 20 degrees and I calculate the pitch, the diametral pitch, I get 18.000, which is really good. Um, that means that um, my measurement is pretty good, and um, I've got an integer, which means that it's standard. Um, oddly enough, if you go to the manufacturing sites and you look at the standard uh, diametral pitches, 18 is not on the list. The point is that it's an integer. So now we know the number of teeth. We know the pressure angle to be 20 degrees, and we know the diametral pitch to be 18. So that's pretty good. Now what about the addendum and the dedendum? Well, luckily, uh, we can measure that directly on the gear. Um, and again, remember that the usual um, amount is, for the addendum is 1 over p. So that, means that, um, so that means that for this particular gear, we're kind of expecting uh, 1 over 18. So let me just take out my calculator really quickly calculate 1 over 18. So 1 over 18 is 0 0.056 inches. So let's go ahead and try to measure across the gear. So I get um, just uh, trying to maximize this measurement. Okay. So 1121. One, so. so I get that if I draw the, um, the pitch circle and two opposite teeth, my measurement is 1.121 one inches. Now I know that the diameter of the pitch circle, um, because, um, because of this equation right over here, if my diametral pitch is 18 and my number of teeth is also 18, then the diameter is just one inch. So from here to here is one inch. And this little bit is the addendum. So obviously one plus twice the addendum is equal to 1.121, which means that twice the addendum is 0 0.121, which means that the addendum is 0 0.0605, which is obviously not 0 0.056. So how much is it off by? And that's okay. You know, they, 
you can actually uh, shave the teeth down to get them a little smaller, or you could build the teeth up to get them a little bigger. That has consequences, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Um, so we know that the addendum is uh, standard, 1 over p. Um, so in this particular case, let's just find out what that factor actually is. So it's, I don't know, some sort of a factor, I'll call it f, divided by p, which is 18. So f is simply 18 times 0 0.0605, which happens to be equal to 1.089. So that's what they used um, for this gear. You know, maybe they, maybe they didn't say exactly, oh, it's 1.089 divided by p. Um, you know, maybe they just decided that, um, you know, their gear needed to be 1.121 across. So anyway, it's slightly bigger than standard. So that's the, uh, I'll call it the addendum factor, right? Okay, so that's the addendum factor. Similarly, um, because the gear has an even number of teeth, we can just measure between the teeth to get the root, and I get... Uh, 0.887. So again, let me draw a little circle. And then going inside, that would be the dedendum, right? So again, the pitch circle is one inch. And the distance between here is, I've already forgotten my measurement, so I'll do the measurement again. Okay, so. This time I'm getting 0 0.888, 0 0.888. So, uh, so we've got two dedendums. So obviously one minus two d is equal to 0 0.888. So that means that two d is equal to 0. Um, two two one. And that means that the dedendum is equal to 0 0.061. Okay, uh, that's actually really close to uh, to a. Um, it's it's frighteningly close to a actually. So f uh, for the dedendum, dedendum. Uh, let me see what that would be. I just have to multiply that by 18. So 0 0.06. Let me just make sure that I got this calculation right. Um, 1 minus 0 0.888. Yeah, that is point. Ah, okay. There we go. I am the dumb one. It is 0 0.112. Sorry about that. And then if I s divide that by 2, I get 0.056. Oops, that's not the factor. 0.056. Okay. Um, and so the factor is 18 times 0.056, which is. Um, Let's measure that. Let's uh, calculate that. 18 times 0 0.056 is 1.008. Okay. So, um, now there's one other thing about gears. Um, if you take two gears and mesh them, their pitch circles basically coincide. That means that a tooth that goes into the gap would look, you know, something like that. And you see that between this other gear's pitch circle and the top of its tooth, that's the addendum right here. But this over here is the dedendum. So the addendum had better be less than the dedendum, otherwise the other gear's tooth will hit the root of the first gear. And that's no good. 
So you want the dedendum to be greater than the addendum. In this case, we don't have that. We have the dedendum being less than the addendum, which says to me that whatever gear they meshed with this was too far away to mesh properly. So um, that's kind of sucky. Let me just double check these measurements just to make absolutely sure that I was going across the gear correctly. Yes, I have 1.121 and across the root I have 0.888. So as far as I'm concerned, that is the correct measurement. So um, that's kind of interesting. So it's important for us to know that. Um, so, okay, um, those are the fundamental measurements of this gear. So let's go ahead and model that up in SOLIDWORKS. So, let's get started modeling the gear. Um, the first thing that I uh, want to talk about is um, this gear template. Uh, file that I have. Um, if I open it up, um, this is actually a parametric gear. Um, if I open up these this equations tab, we can actually see that it is parameterized according to P, N, Phi, uh, addendum, and B is the dedendum. Um, so um, you can change those numbers and you get uh, the gear modeled correctly. Um, so take a look at this link. Um, this is the YouTube video where they show exactly how to uh, do this from scratch. And I highly recommend that you go through it. Um, the one, uh, well, there are two changes that I made uh, to that procedure. The first one, um, and you won't get this now, but uh, if you go through the video, you'll understand where it's coming from. Uh, at the very end, the circular pattern um, I did a few things. So the first thing that I did was I parameterized the number of teeth. So instead of hard coding it, I made this equal to n, which is the number of teeth. The second thing that you have to do, and uh, I don't know if all versions of SOLIDWORKS have this, but on my version at least, which is 2014, you have to check geometry pattern. Otherwise, you'll get this error over here that says something like cannot rebuild and something that doesn't seem to mean anything at all having to do with anything. Um, why geometry pattern has to be checked, nobody seems to know. Um, but nevertheless, uh, that's what you have to do to get it to work. Um, the one other thing that I did was uh, for these fillets um, that are down here by the root, um, I also parameterized them. Um, instead, of, uh, instead of a fixed value, I just made it equal to C over 2. Um, C over 2, C is the, dis is the difference between the addendum and the dedendum. Um, so I found it useful to just make that parameterized. Uh, so, anyway, um, there's a gear. Okay, so this is our starting point. Um, and what we are actually going to do is copy this into um, another file, and then we'll start modifying these numbers and all the measurements in order to uh, get everything working properly. So, uh, let me close that file. Okay. Um, the other thing is I took a scan of the gear itself, uh, which is a, a good idea, um, especially if you're dealing with a flat part, so that you can actually measure on uh, uh, various features. Um, you can see that there is this one um, tooth missing, uh, and in fact there is a circular feature that goes over here. Um, that locks the gear into place. So it's important to know what size a uh, circular feature that is. What is the radius of that circle? And where is its center? And you can do that easily using something like CorelDRAW um, or I suppose Inkscape, I guess. Um, Illustrator will work. Um, it's nice to measure the, uh, 
the diameter of this, uh, even though you can do that with calipers. Um, you could even measure the diameter of the root, um, you know, to see if uh, you got it right. So, so let me uh, let me close that for the moment and start with a gear. So what I'm going to do is open up SolidWorks. Uh, let me close this gear that I was playing with and open the gear template. And again, uh, you can create this uh, template using uh, that YouTube video. Uh, okay, so let me save it as, save as, and I'll just say <clears throat> gear from bag five. Okay, so let's look at the equations. Okay, uh, so we've got various numbers that we can change. Obviously, the diametral pitch we have to change to 18. Okay, number of teeth is 18. We keep that. We know that phi is is uh, 20 degrees, so we're going to keep that. Now we had calculated the uh, addendum factor. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and change that to the right factor so that we uh, we get the uh, um, exact measurement. So this was 1.089 and this number here for the dedendum, I don't want units, was 1.008. Okay, now this value here, C, he calls the clearance and that's the difference between the dedendum and the addendum. Uh, remember that um, when two gears mesh, um, they mesh at the pitch circle, so the dedendum has to be greater than the addendum if they mesh at the pitch circle, uh, which they should uh, in order to have the teeth mesh properly. Um, the fact that this clearance is negative means that if you do try to mesh the gears at the pitch uh, diameter, um, the tooth will run into the root of the opposite gear and the gears won't work. So clearly on this machine, uh, they move, the, they space the gears out further, um, which uh, is not a good idea, but nevertheless, that's what they did. So let's hit OK. All right, and we end up with this really fat gear. That's because by default, the extrusion of the gear was set to one inch. So um, I'm just going to very quickly measure the thickness of the gear. And it is 0.157. So let's change that to 0.157. Hit OK. And there we go. There is our gear. Uh, let's go ahead and rebuild. Okay, that didn't quite work. Um, oh, these fillets are not working properly. So let's see why. Okay, so it says that the fillet is um, 0 0.0625, which I know is not correct. So let's go back to the equations and yeah, see, that's supposed to be the clearance. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to click on the circular pattern, tell it to rebuild. Why isn't it rebuilding? Nobody knows. Fill it. Let me just say again, C over 2. Hit OK. The syntax of the equation is incorrect. <laughs> Global variables, C divided by 2. Ah, negative values are not supported. That's right. So really what I want is the absolute value, right? Yeah. So the absolute value of C over 2. And you have to do that because C is negative. Okay. There we go. Hit OK. And rebuild. And there we go. So the fillet's really small. You can you can barely see it, but it's there. So all right. Uh, so that's the outline of our gear. 
Um, let's put the hub in there. Um, I could measure it, um, but let's go ahead and use Corel Draw to actually measure the, uh, the uh, hub. So let me go ahead and import um, my gear image, and I scan this at 1200 dpi just so that I can get a nice big um, image. Now I don't rescale this because it is scaled properly. And I'm going to take a circle and I'm going to just draw a round circle. Okay, and you notice that my outline is really small. Um, it's blue so it can show up pretty well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attempt to fit the circle to the edge here. So obviously I need to expand the circle a bit. Maybe expand it a little more. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I want to find the exact center of this gear. And when I find the exact center, I'll be able to measure this circle over here, find its center, and then measure the distance between the two centers and use that in SolidWorks. Okay, so um, there's my circle. So according to this, the circle is 0 0.309 across. Uh, it's probably a little bigger than that. So, okay, that looks about right, 0.313 which, perhaps not coincidentally, is um, exactly, I think it's 3 sixteenths? No, 5 sixteenths of an inch, 0.3125. So, all right, well, that's kind of cool. So we know that this is uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch. Um, let me actually take my calipers and do the actual measurement. And what do I get? I get 0.31. 0.311 or so, 0.312. I get about 0 0.311, 0 0.312. So that's pretty close. Anyway, the point is that now I have the center of this gear. Um, if I wanted to, I could actually now measure perhaps uh, the root circle. Why don't we do that just for fun? So I made a copy of the circle. And now I'm just going to, let's see, what did we calculate it to be? We calculated it to be, well, we measured it to be 0.888. So let's take a look if that's correct. 0.888 in diameter. Uh, that looks about right to me. Uh, it's slightly off there. It's not off there. So it's a little off there. Yeah, it's close enough. It's pretty close. Um, you can see that this fillet is actually quite large. Um, I don't think that matters too much. The point is that the, a gear is basically a gear if it meshes. Okay, so that's my outer circle. Um, I don't really need it, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, there's a pin in that gear that you saw, and you see these little cracks in there? Um, that's because the steel is actually soft steel and they pressed the pin in, which basically um, tries to expand the hole of the, st of the steel. Um, and then once they did that, presumably they cut the, uh, this other circular feature uh, using some sort of a cutter. So we're going to try to find out um, how big that circle is by just drawing a circle. Um, I could, I suppose, use a three-point circle, but I'm not really sure where the tangent points are going to be. So let's just uh, go ahead and draw a circle. So let's see. Oops. So that's uh, kind of a circle. Let me move it. Okay, obviously the circle is bigger than that. Let's try an even one inch, just for fun. And let's move this. Okay, obviously it's bigger than an inch. So let's try one and a half, not 15, 1.5 and 1.5. 
Um, if you had a radius gauge, uh, you could probably measure that directly. Or if you had the actual um, other gear that went along with this, you could measure that other gear. Maybe you could scan it um, and then measure it in the same way. But we're not at that stage yet. So let me move this over a bit. Ooh, that's actually looking pretty good. Yeah, it's probably slightly smaller, maybe. Um, slightly bigger, I would think, because now I have to move the circle down to here. Right, and we've still got a gap, so let's try 1.625. I'm just trying some even numbers, some even fractions. So let's see. Let's move this over a little bit so I can see. Huh. Okay. Let's move this over to here. I think that's that's probably pretty close. Um I'm wondering if they actually press this pin in afterwards, and that sort of bulged this out. Um, the alternative is that I can move this out and then increase this a little more. So we're yeah, we're basically going to guess at this. So let me um, let's see. How about we add a little bit, like 1.75. And then we go here, move it over a bit. It's getting real close. Let's just try an even two inches. Oops, that's probably going to end up being too big. Or maybe not. I think we have a winner. OK, so uh, that circle is definitely two inches. And now we just measure the distance between the center of this circle and the center of that circle, and we will get the uh, we will get effectively a cutting tool that we need to apply in SolidWorks. So there's that circle. Uh, let me take a line. Where's my line tool? Here we go. A two-point line. Snap to the center of that circle and to the center of that circle and look at the properties is it the wine glass no where is it the pen the fill one of these is the uh, ah there it is length of curve huh it's really close to 1.5 inches well that's um suspicious Let's just call it one and a half inches then. Um, well, that's fun. Okay, so now I go back to SolidWorks and we know that we have a circle that is two inches in diameter. So its radius is one. Well, okay, so its diameter is two. And it's 1.5 inches away from the center of this gear. So let's just go ahead and look at the top plane and give us some room down over here, say. Um, and that circle is going to be in line with the center of a tooth. So the first thing I need to do is, um, yeah, I need reference geometry. So we need to have, um, can I just do this with a sketch? I think I probably can. So let me start a sketch and do it on the top plane. I'm just going to select the top plane. Okay. Um, I'm going to draw a line. Yeah. So it's exactly in the center of one tooth, just like that. Okay. Um, So I'm going to draw another line. Okay, and that one is for construction because it's not actually 
it's not actually part of um, any outline or anything. So there's my construction line. And then what I want is a circle. So it's going to be, I don't know, out here somewhere. And what I want to do is define a relation. Click OK. Define a relation so that this point is coincident with this line. In other words, whatever this, whatever the extension of this line is, that point lies along the line. So add a relation, this point, oh, apparently the uh, circle is selected, so let me unselect it. Add a relation, this point with this line, coincident. There we go. So now this circle lies along this line, which is correct because we want the circle to um, to um, to basically cut off one of these teeth. All right, and now we simply dimension the circle to two inches, and there we go. Does that seem right to you? No, because we still haven't defined the distance between the center of the circle and the center of the gear. So let's do that now. Um, what we'll do is we will um, just take another line, draw it between these two points, mark that for construction, hit OK, and then we will dimension that line um, along its length. Be careful not to do this because that's its X size. And we know that it is 1.5 inches. There we go. Now things are looking correct. So there's our cutting tool. Let's exit the sketch. So we can see that that is going to cut into our gear. So now what we do is we do an extruded cut. So we're simply going to cut, uh, and then it's going to have to be through all, isn't it? Through all. So let's see what happens if I hit OK. Cannot locate end of feature. Well, that's interesting. OK. How about we simply, oh, that's because it's going in the wrong direction. So through all. Uh, I'm, I don't really want to do through all both because of what happened last time, so I'll just do through all and change the direction, right? Right. Hit OK, and there we go. We have our cut. So um, it doesn't quite look like the image of the gear, which as you can see, it doesn't really have that, you know, that thing in it, but um, I suspect that, um, again, uh, what may have happened is that they simply put the pin in first, um, and then they maybe cut the entire thing, or maybe they didn't even cut this tooth at all. Doesn't matter. The point is that, um, we know that um, we know that, that the, the uh, circle is two inches and we know how far away it is from the gear. So we know that whatever circular feature this is on the machine, it will certainly mesh properly with this gear and lock it in place, no matter what we do with this. Now, you know, maybe what they did was they went in and, um, you know, modified it maybe so that, you know, there was, uh, you know, a line here maybe or something. It doesn't matter. The point is that that this thing will work. Now, the question is, where is the pin located? So, you know, maybe the pin is actually located over here, in which case we do have to fill in something over here. So let's go back to the image. And um, rather than measure the diameter of the pin over here, I'm just going to measure it um, using the calipers because the pin sticks up out of the other side and we get a pin that is 0.145 inches. Okay, so let me draw a circle and make it 1.45 inches. Uh, where did this circle go? 
okay, uh, I meant 0 0.145. Sneaky decimal point. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to take this and stick it right there, say. What I'm trying to do is, um, notice that it's not, not really centered, which is interesting, because if it were centered, the center of the circle would be right over here. Um, so that is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know whether that's significant or not, um, but we'll treat it as significant. So now I'm just eyeballing this. Ah, okay, you know what I should do? I should draw a circle around here. See, what happens is the pin is actually beveled um, inside here so that they could press it in well. Um, so of course the bevel is going to be smaller than the actual pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm basically just going to try to fit it around the bevel so that I can locate the center of the circle. Okay, I think that's about right. So there's the center of the circle. So now let me copy that circle and expand it to 0.145 just so that we can see the outline of the actual um, of the actual pin. Okay, um, you can also see that the steel didn't expand outwards to cover the entire diameter of the pin. Again, I think that's because of the beveling, um, so that the steel didn't have to expand that much. Nevertheless, um, this helps us locate the pin, the center of the pin. So, um, we need to know First of all, first of all, we have this line between the two uh, circles, and we need to draw a line that is perpendicular to that line so that we know how far off that center line it is. So we will simply take a perpendicular, okay? So it snaps right to it, and that's the useful thing about Corel Draw is that you know you can get all these geometrical relationships. So if you look at the length of the curve, it says 0.007 and something. So um, basically it's 7 thou off, um, which kind of sort of says to me that it really should be on the center line because 7 thou, well, yeah, it's, it's a bit. Um, so let's just go with that, 7 thou. Um, and then the other thing that we need to do is measure the distance now that we have one perpendicular distance, we need to measure the other perpendicular distance. So I'm just going to take another line and I'm going to, first of all, deselect that line segment, otherwise it'll attach it. And so I go from here up to the center of the circle, right there, and it says 0.404. Okay. So we need to go 0.404 down this way and 7th thou that way. So I'm going to go back to SolidWorks and uh, draw another sketch. So sketch, sketch, let's go on to the top plane again, top plane, and now I'm going to take a circle, and it's going to be, um, hmm. okay, instead of a circle, let me take a line and draw it again right over here so that it's right in the middle, and this is for construction, there. Okay, so that's my uh, center line, again. Um, so I'm going to have a circle, and it's not going to be on the center line. It's going to be somewhat off. Um, its dimension is 0.145. Uh, it is placed... 
see if I draw a perpendicular line. So, okay, now that's obviously not perpendicular, but we're going to make it perpendicular. So first of all, it is for construction. Yes, and okay. And then I can draw, uh, define a relation. So I'm simply going to add a relation between this line and this line and make them perpendicular. There we go. And now I will say that this is along its length, if I can get that defined, 0 0.007. Okay. Uh, and then the next thing that I have to do is say how far along this line that point is, so I'm just going to say from here to here along this line is, what did we say it was? I forgot. Oops, Corel draw, uh, 0.404. So, 0 0.404, that's where that pin is. So, yeah, you can definitely see that, let me just exit the sketch now. So you can definitely see that this circle um, is, there we go. I had it facing the wrong line. This is the top plane right over here. Um, so this circle definitely uh, goes over these, uh, these empty spots, which obviously isn't a good idea. So we need to add material here. So if we look at the image of the gear, um, we can see that um, clearly there isn't a smooth curve at the end of the uh, at the end of the gear. So in other words, this area here isn't actually filled out, um, which would probably be a good idea if you really wanted to lock this gear into place. But it isn't. So um, so we have to see. Um, we, we could just fill in these areas and just call it done. Um, the other thing we could do is just um, fill in a little bit. So what we could do is let's go ahead and draw the uh, root circle. So I'm just going to take a copy of my uh, center circle and I'm going to draw out the root circle, which was, let's see, 0.888. Okay, there's the root circle. So now we can see roughly where they decided to put this point over here, um, approximately. Um, and then we can just sort of, you know, connect this tooth. Um, maybe this tooth sort of ended here and here, and we could just sort of connect them up. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you know the the surface of this circle touches this um, nice outer surface here. So let's go ahead and just uh, draw a line. I'm going to draw a line out to here so that it's roughly in that intersection over here. Then I'm going to deselect it and draw another line from the intersection here to about here just to see how far away that is, okay, 0.0325, say. So if I go back to SolidWorks, you know, we could just, um, fine. Um, we could just, uh, oops, got that on the wrong side again. Um, we could just fill in up to there maybe? Sure, let's let's do that. Uh, or maybe even a little further. Something like, let's see, how about from here out to there? That'll probably work. So let's just go ahead and start up another sketch. Sketch sketch on this face. Let's pull out a line. Let's just grab this and go up to there and grab 
have this. Let's see, the other side would be here. Okay, so we, we're going to want to fill in this area. So I'm going to just sort of do this and this. I'm just closing the curve here. Um, and then we have to close this curve. And the way to close that curve is um, we know that this is a, um, let's see. Well, we know that it'll close on its own. It's already closed, so I'm just going to do this. That's fine. Hit OK. Exit the sketch. Um, and then, now that we have that, we can just extrude this. So let's just go ahead and extrude that in the other direction, through all, hit OK, and there we go. Okay, so that's, you know, kind of sort of the look that that gear has. Um, so let's see, all right, we can put the hub in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll put in another sketch on this plane with a circle. And what did we say it was? Uh, three, uh, five sixteenths of an inch. So let's do that. We'll just say 5 sixteenths of an inch, exit the sketch, and then we are going to just rotate this a little bit, and we're going to cut all the way down, so that would be through all. Great, now we've got a hole in there. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to do is the pin. So um, we could model these as separate parts. Um, I'm just going to model it as uh, a single part. Why not? Um, that way, if this is actually 3D printed, it'll 3D print as a single part, and it'll be stronger, you know, rather than um, having to have this hole cut in here and then a pin pressed into it. We don't need that stuff. So I'm just going to select that sketch. Um, and let me just take my calipers to find out how tall that pin is above the face. And it is, in fact, 0.191. So I'm going to extrude and rotate. So no, not in that direction. In that direction, 0.191. Okay. And we're just about done. Um, the only thing that I want to do is apply a chamfer on this edge right over here. Um, I'm looking at the gear, and if you looked at the scan, um, you were seeing the gear from this side. And there wasn't actually any chamfer over here, but I'm looking at the gear on the other side, and there is a chamfer. It's not rounded, so it's not a fillet. It's um, it seems to be uh, just straight, which means it's a chamfer. So I'll just take the chamfer tool. Um, I want that to be chamfered. That's a bit too much of a chamfer. So I'll just say, I don't know, 0 0.005. It's kind of a small chamfer. Eh, let's make it a little bigger. Um, and the chamfer is there just to sort of make things, uh, make the gear easier to put onto, um, to put onto shafts. Uh, if you didn't have the chamfer, you would have to align the gear properly. With a chamfer, um, with a chamfer, it will align itself. So that's uh, that's good enough. So let's hit OK, and there we go. We have a gear. So let me save that, and we're done. So that was the gear. Um, next time, um, we're not going to go for the spring. Um, that's a bit of a weird subject. Um, but I think we'll take a look at the uh, funny weaver sort of thing. So uh, this has been rather a long episode. Um, so hopefully you uh, stuck with it and um, enjoy uh, having fun with SolidWorks. And we will see you next time.
I say that your lips taste the best It's not just because I love you It's because I must confess Oui, tu dois savoir, je suis un connoisseur